Um, Alan, Andrew described Dory as a tragic figure in the first movie that he felt bad that he hadn't noticed how unresolved and awful it was that he left that character hanging for so long. I wonder what was your thoughts at the time when you were Dory in the first movie and did you feel that there was a lot more of her story and did you wonder, you know, what, what had happened to her? Um, no, I really didn't and had I thought about it and, and uh, done actually what Andrew did is, is think about where did she come from, who is her family, um, I would have called him sooner and said, here's the sequel, here's the idea. <laughs> I wouldn't have had to wait so long. Um, but um, no, I, you know, I think that when you, when you really think about it, I, I actually don't think it is tragic. I think that you can look at it that way, but as you see in the film now, what appears to be a disability is you know, her strength, and it turns into what would Dory do? So maybe what appears to be a disability is actually something that everybody else can look at in another way and say, actually, that's a different way of thinking and it's a good way of thinking. So I love that message in it that something that seems to be a handicap is uh, something you can use as a strength. What, 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 did you put in, what did you put into that and um, how did you come up with that slogan and how to make Dory universal? Well, the Just Keep Swimming came from uh, Andrew who, who wrote it and that was, that was him. Um, as far as the, it, I think it's so much more than a cartoon movie, and I think that's, I think we're all so proud of this. I mean, it's much more complex and layered than any of us thought it would be. It's much more complex and layered than Nemo, and Nemo was a great movie, but there are so many layers to this, and, and it is a, a very personal story for, for Dory, and it's a very, um, it's, it is emotional, so it was very easy for me to cry, it was you know to it, it was like I couldn't um, I couldn't read the lines and pretend to sniffle and pretend to get emotional. It was it was emotional. It was really sad. Everything that Dory was going through and feeling, and so these are all human feelings. They're all the same feelings we all have, and it it, it does show the power of these animators. How they make it so beautiful and so realistic, and the characters they create are so complex that you do get emotionally and you do cry at a fish. And, and we all cried, like it, it really is a beautiful story. So um, it, was, uh, it was fun and uh, challenging to, to get that emotion with just a voice and no other physical, you know, you can't give you a, a, a body language or anything um, attached to that, but I don't know, I'm just, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's it, credit to the writing as well. Caitlin and Ty, do you guys know a lot more about whales now? Do you do a lot of research when you're playing these characters? Like, are you dropping whale fun facts at parties now? Oh, all the time. I can't. <laughs> you we all, call you, each but other. But you always used to do yeah, that. Yeah, I've always been a whale, a whale whales. talker. Um, no, I mean, I, I love, I did a fair amount of research. You know, I love that they're the large, a uh, whale shark is the largest fish and that they have no teeth and so you can swim with them and that's pretty cool. Um, but that was about the extent of what I did. It just gave me a license to be like, oh, she's just a nice, she's a nice whale. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was your beluga well, experience? Well, uh, that kind of what I was saying before. I think I sort of overthought it and then realized that um, I should just work on yeah. <laughs> the actual text. <laughs> Feelings and text. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is one's for Ellen. You've helped shape Dory's personality from the very beginning in Finding Nemo. Um, did you have a particular connection with Dory's desire for belonging and finding a family? Actually, this goes out to all the cast if you felt you had a connection. Um, well, I think everybody is searching for their home, whatever that is. I think home is different for everybody, but um, you know, I, I understand what, it, what a sense of belonging is. I understand when you want to say, why am I who I am? Where did I come from? And you know, how did I end up where I am? So yeah, I, I can relate to that. I think everybody can. Um, Marlon and Dory have two very different approaches to problem solving. One is very analytical, one is kind of taking what you got and going with it. So for each of you and for anybody else who might want to answer, how do you deal with problems? Do you analyze them and come up with a solution or do you just kind of go with looking around and figuring out what's going to happen? Okay, I'll give you a real answer. Because thank God my memory is great, but as you get older, you do forget little things, and I have come up now with a new philosophy of life, and that if something is bothering me, I ask myself to check back in in 30 minutes. And if it's still bothering me, I deal with it. 
but a lot of it I don't remember. Uh, and, and my answer is both. I do both. I mean, it just depends on the situation. I do, being a comedian, I think that I analyze, I look around, I kind of observe and analyze all kinds of things. I, I try to not do anything irresponsible, um, but I also do like to be spontaneous and just uh, sometimes take chances. If I could just come to Mr. Eugene Levy for a minute, sir. Uh, if I, yes, you, he is here. If I, if I could say, you know, you, you play such a great movie dad. You're always comfortable and relatable. Like, I, every time you're a dad in a movie, I want to come move in at your house. What, what is your secret? It's called acting. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, you know, you're dealing with, I think, the greatest storylines, as evident in this uh, movie, is uh, the greatest storylines really have to do with family, and uh, because the, that's the one thing that is the most important thing in all our lives, or should be, anyway. Um, so anytime you're dealing in a familial kind of situation, a dad and a, and a child, or, you know, yeah, those are the stories that kind of resonate with me because they, they're, they're about something absolutely tangible and real. Uh, and those are the storylines that, um, that you can kind of really have fun with and really get behind and totally kind of pour yourself into.